well, I'm working on a a Craftsman five horse uh, rear tine tiller. Um, has a 17 inch uh, path. And what happened was the input shaft on it uh, blew both of the uh, needle bearing uh, needle bearings out of it. And uh, I'll show you the cups. <laughs> so this is the opposite side of the input. And this has a back on it. Here's the cup. There wasn't one needle left in there. And here's the pass-through needle bearing. And that's the big pulley on the side of the machine that runs off of the motor. And that uh, that spins the whole transmission. And the problem is, and I think it's a, a design problem, the, because it's high in the gear case and all they use is this uh, real sticky um, grease, there's really no lubrication up here. And I suppose they hope that those needle bearings are going to hold up, but in this case I saw the pulley was kind of making a, a different noise and then I reached my hand in there and I wobbled the pulley around. So I got the races out, or the, got the old bearings out and I've done a little research and if you're having to do this same thing on your, seems there's the shaft is 65 bucks to replace and it wore out the shaft, shaft a bit but the ID on the shaft or the, the ID on the bearing is 5 eighths and then the OD this hole is 15 sixteenths, I believe. And I'm not putting needle bearings back in. I'm gonna put in oil light bronze uh, bear bearings or bushings. So here's the other one. This is the one that comes in off the motor side or the, the input side. Um, so I'm gonna walk you into the garage and show you what I'm doing, how I'm kind of doing the low cost repair of the shaft. Okay, here's the shaft. And this end was about half this size. And I've added two washers to hold the uh, the corner of the shaft. And I'm going to start grinding this down. I already ground this down once. And I rough ground it on the bench grinder. And of course, this is the this is the spline shaft that uh, makes the shifts in the gears. Let's put that in there. And so this moves back and forth to get the different combinations. And of course here, here's the input side, and then there's just uh, the other side. And I added some length, and I'm going to grind it down, of course, what I said with the, gr the bench grinder. And then I don't have a lathe. So here's what I figured out. And I looked all over and I couldn't see uh, that anybody was doing anything like this. And so what I'm going to do is just put this in my, my, my drill press. And then when I get it close, I'm just going to strap this flat file into my uh, my vise for my drill press and I'm just gonna work work it down and you know just stay on it with my uh, calipers and uh, I can I can mill it down just with my drill press and the in it's the see it, it runs fairly fairly smooth good enough to get me um, my uh, 625 to fit in the bearing. And then I just grabbed I just grabbed a bushing up at my hardware store uh, to do my fitting so I can do all my tests with this bushing but I'm going to order this is too thin for that outside the OD on that uh, the, car the carrier for these bearings so I need to go uh, 15 16 into the carrier and I had to actually sand a little bit inside this bu bearing or bushing to get it to slide on the shaft. But you know what? It was really close. So 
Okay, so here's the deal. I'm cheap. Uh, you know, I get so ticked when you got to go down and spend 20 bucks for a little, well, not 10 bucks for a needle bearing. And then, of course, 65 for the, for the shaft. So, you know, if you have a few tools, like I have the welder, I have a little wire feed and a regular stick welder. And I also have, you know, of course, the drill press. If you didn't have that set up, it would be a little tough. But, you know, it just kind of... If, if I can figure a way to do it myself, I'll do it myself rather than just go buy all new parts. Because I figured I could get 115 bucks into that rototiller. Um, just like that. Even before I like change the geese, grease and check for any other problems. And I can basically repair it for, I don't know, 15 bucks. So, you know, if I got spare time, I'll try to repair it. That's kind of the way I'm built. So... Uh, if you are, you know, struggling with this kind of situation on your Craftsman rototiller, I hope this helps you because I really believe those bushings, those bronze bearings are going to work. And not only that, I'm going to drill holes into b both bearings and I'm going to set greasers. So every time, you know, we fire up the rototiller, I'll give it a little squirt of g grease, good grease, and it should hold forever besides that i'm going to make i'm going to make the bearings longer i'm going to give it more length more you know whatever you know what i'm talking about so there you go i thought that was pretty good i would like a metal lathe for the few times that i get into this situation but uh you know this this will work uh so I hope this helps you, and uh, I'll uh, I'll check with you later. Um, I'll maybe make another video when I get the thing repaired and fired up and running. Okay, bye.